practitioners in uh, wo uski jo practical utility hai ya uski jo practical implication hai usko kaise samajhte hain so before i start with uh, my formal presentation uh, i would just like this uh, session to be more interactive to main agar jo 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 log is jo lawyers is session ko attend kar rahe hain agar main unse ye puch sakun ki unke nazdeek इंटरनेशनल आर्बिट्रेशन या इन्फोर्समेंट ऑफ फॉरन आर्बिट्रल अवार्ड या अगर हम उसको शुरू करें इंटरनेशनल आर्बिट्रेशन एग्रीमेंट उसकी क्या अहमियत है उनकी लॉ प्रैक्टिस में या जनरल जो प्रैक्टिस ऑफ कमर्शियल लॉ है उसमें इंटरनेशनल आर्बिट्रेशन की क्या अहमियत हो सकती है उनके नजदीक इंटरनेशनल जो इन्फोर्स जो इंटरनेशनल आर्बिट्रल जो अवार्ड्स हैं उनकी क्या अहमियत हो सकती है या जो इंटरनेशनल आर्बिट्रेशन जो एग्रीमेंट्स हैं उनके 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 रिव्यू क्या अहमियत है कोई कुछ बात करना चाहे कैसे होते हैं arbitration and the seat of the arbitration is not actually in pakistan it is in some other country mm-hmm. so uski enforcement ke liye basically hai chale ji main sirf ek ground set karne ki koshish kar raha tha aur i was hoping ke is initial introduction ke baad jo jo meri presentation hai uski uski jo ek proper context mein jo hai wo baat ho sakti hai as the next slide जो पाकिस्तान में जो आर्बिट्रेशन का जो लीगल रिजीम है उसमें आप रफली स्पीकिंग जो पाकिस्तान में आर्बिट्रेशन है उसको दो कैटेगरीज में डिवाइड कर सकते हैं डोमेस्टिक आर्बिट्रेशन और इंटरनेशनल आर्बिट्रेशन अगर हम नेक्स्ट स्लाइड पे जाएं तो आप देखेंगे कि जो डोमेस्टिक आर्बिट्रेशन है उसकी जो गवर्निंग लेजिस्लेशन है जैसे कि उनसे पहले आने वाले स्पीकर ऑलरेडी डिस्कस कर चुके हैं वो आर्बिट्रेशन एक्ट नाइनटीन फोर्टी है लेकिन जब हम इंटरनेशनल आर्बिट्रेशन पे जाते हैं तो इंटरनेशनल 
generation to go next uh, aspect then. The international arbitration to the regime in Pakistan makes it uh, somewhat uh, complicated. Or many of us are here, So basically, this is uh, international arbitration. Or international arbitration in Pakistan may basically two main uh, international conventions and in Pakistan may sign or ratify the the main convention is the New York Convention of uh, 1958. And Pakistan has the New York Convention of 1958. 1958 has signed it. But uh, it could become enforceable in Pakistan. Or this convention or any convention would become enforceable only if uh, the contracting state has also ratified it. So although Pakistan had uh, signed New York Convention back in 1958. Pakistan ratified New York Convention as late as uh, 2005. So basically, the most important uh, convention, which uh, mainly deals with uh, international commercial arbitration, this was ratified by Pakistan in, uh, uh, I think it was uh, 14th of July 2005. And 14th of July 2005, it became uh, enforceable in Pakistan. But there is also a requirement under Pakistani law, and that requirement calls for the enactment of uh, the enabling legislation. So although Pakistan, uh, although uh, if Pakistan has ratified an international convention, it would not become enforceable in Pakistan till such time that Pakistan introduces the enabling legislation. So the enabling legislation was uh, introduced in Pakistan the same day through, uh, a, through, through an ordinance which has a life of 120 days. So New York Convention of 19, uh, 1958 was, uh, uh, was uh, legislated upon in Pakistan for the first time in 2005 through uh, an ordinance. And as I mentioned before, an ordinance has only a life of uh, 100 and, uh, 120 days. And this, this, uh, this uh, ordinance basically uh, uh, got revealed upon its expiration. And from 2005 until 2011, if I remember correctly, government of Pakistan introduced around 9 to 10 ordinances just to make sure that uh, the New York Convention remained in remains enforceable in Pakistan. However, in 2011, the government of Pakistan uh, introduced a permanent uh, enactment under the New York Convention of 1958. And this enactment is for recognition and enforcement, arbitration agreement, and foreign arbitral award act 2011. And basically, what does this, uh, what does this uh, legislation deal with? Not only that this uh, legislation enforces the provisions of the New York Convention of 1958 into Pakistan. But having said this, uh, this uh, legislation deals with two, uh, two, two, uh, uh, two uh, closely affiliated and associated issues. And these issues are international arbitration agreement and enforcement of foreign arbitral awards. So the legal regime in Pakistan today is that for the enforcement of a foreign arbitral award, uh, uh, you have to basically institute legal proceedings in Pakistan under the provisions of this uh, recognition and enforcement arbitration agreements and foreign arbitral award act of 2011. So this is one part of uh, the picture. Having said this, there is another legislation. Uh, this is called Arbitration Protocol and Convention Act of 1997. So, uh, 1937. So before this regime came into place, the enforcement of arbitral awards in Pakistan was dealt with Arbitration uh, Protocol and Convention Act of uh, 1937. And when Recognition and Enforcement uh, Act of 2011 was introduced, and even before that, when basically the convention was uh, enacted in Pakistan or enforced in Pakistan through ordinances. Each ordinance and eventually the Act of 2011 basically got repealed the Arbitration Protocol and Convention Act 
1937. The Arbitration Protocol and Convention Act of 1937 uh, had a very limited scope. It had a very limited scope. And basically, the, uh, the, the basis uh, for the enforcement of an international arbitration award uh, under the Protocol and Convention Act of 1937 called for reciprocity. So there was this concept of reciprocity that only uh, award uh, made in those contracting states would be enforceable in Pakistan uh, 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 where government of Pakistan has reciprocal arrangements uh, with those states. And at the end of the day, uh, not more than seven or eight uh, countries have those reciprocal arrangements with Pakistan. With the result that uh, the practical utility of uh, Arbitration Protocol and Convention Act of 1937 was almost nil. Uh, the countries uh, 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 with, with, with whom uh, government of Pakistan had uh, reciprocal arrangements, uh, if I remember correctly, included uh, uh, United Kingdom, Singapore, Australia, and perhaps uh, some other countries. So, the scope of uh, Arbitration Protocol and Convention Act was uh, very narrow. Having said this, when this uh, act was repealed by the 2011 Act, uh, it stated that uh, the, the, the 1937 Act is being repealed, but in, in, in relation to those awards, in relation to those arbitration awards, which are not covered by the 2011 Act, still the enforcement of those awards would take place under the Arbitration Protocol and Convention Act. So this is a very strange situation where, although the uh, Act has been re repealed for some purposes, for other purposes, it's still not repealed. So, you know, I mean, in principle, this should not have been here. But for some very limited purposes, since it is still uh, enforceable in Pakistan, I thought it appropriate to basically make a reference to Arbitration Protocol and Convention Act of 1937. So, you have this regime where a commercial dispute between two between parties belonging to two contracting states. And obviously the definition of a contracting state is a state which has ratified the New York Convention and is a party to the New York Convention. So basically there would be two tests. I mean the first test would be that in order for the New York Convention regime to become applicable, I mean the dispute uh, or, or, or the arbitration agreement has to be between uh, be between parties belonging to two contracting states, number one. And number two, and most importantly, the, is the seat of arbitration or the country where the arbitration award is uh, handed down, it has to be a contracting state. So if, uh, uh, I mean, just uh, to give you an example, I mean, just a hypothetical example, if uh, country X or, or say if uh, Mozambique is not a signatory to the New York Convention, but the arbitration proceedings take place in Mozambique and the award is handed down or it, and the award is uh, made in Mozambique, that award would not be enforceable under the New York Convention for the reason that Mozambique is not a contracting state. So basically there are two principles, I mean number one, the parties, they should be from uh, the two contracting states, and most, and, but, but having said this, uh, I think th this is somewhat disputable. In this, uh, not disputable, I think the, 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 perhaps different jurists would have different interpretation. Having said this, the uh, fundamental principle is that the seat of arbitration, the seat of arbitration has to be in one of the contracting states. So, so if from the same contracting state, actually bo both the parties are from the same contracting states, but the seat of arbitration they've chosen actually Singapore or uh, abroad, uh, I, I, I think it's a good question. I think it's a very good question. Uh, the principle, the principle as mentioned in the New York Convention is that I think it would not apply. No. I mean, just, just uh, I mean. Uh, you know, I mean, everything, everything which is uh, under the New York Convention of 1958, I mean, there would be various interpretations. But 
my view is that uh, if the two parties, they are coming from the same state, and although the seat of arbitration is uh, an overseas uh, 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 seat, it would not be enforceable under the New York Convention. It would be, in my view, treated as a domestic arbitration award. And in the case of Pakistan, uh, it would be enforceable under the Arbitration Act of 1940. So this is the regime under the New York Convention Act. And this is in those rare cases where the arbitration uh, award has to be interpreted, uh, uh, enforced under the Arbitration Act. And then you have this regime under the Washington Convention. So this uh, Washington Convention, the full name is uh, International Convention for Settlement of uh, Investment Disputes between states and uh, I think citizens of uh, other states. This, this is a 1965 convention. It's also called the ICSID uh, Convention or the Washington Convention. And interestingly, uh, uh, this was uh, uh, signed in 1965. And uh, if I remember correctly, Pakistan ratified this convention in 1965. But Pakistan failed to introduce the enabling legislation under the, uh, under the Washington uh, Convention or Exit Convention and the enabling uh, the, uh, the legislation was introduced in 2011. So, uh, there are, uh, so basically, New York Convention uh, or the arbitration which take place under the New York Convention, uh, these are also referred to as uh, arbitration uh, which originate pursuant to an arbitration agreement. So, in this particular case, uh, there would be an arbitration only and only if there is an arbitration agreement. And if there is no arbitration agreement, unless and until the parties voluntarily decide that they are going to go for an arbitration, there would be no arbitration under the New York Convention. Having said this, in this regime, there is no requirement of an arbitration agreement. And this regime normally takes place under, uh, uh, under, under or pursuant to a bilateral investment treaty. So Pakistan has signed uh, bilateral investment treaties with perhaps 70 or 80 countries of the world. So if there is a, a dispute between the investor of a contracting state and say the government of Pakistan, or if there is a dispute between say an investor from Pakistan and say the government of uh, United Kingdom or the United government of Saudi Arabia, if uh, if Saudi Arabia is a party to, uh, to 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 the Washington Convention, then the then the arbitration would take place under the uh, under the rules of uh, exit, which is a part of uh, the World Bank Group, and the enforcement of the award would. Would, would, would take place under the Arbitration International Investment Disputes Act of 2011. Now there's a difference. And the important difference is that uh, for the enforcement of an award under the 2011 Act, under the New York Convention, you bring the award for enforcement uh, to Pakistan, you file an application under uh, in all probability section 6 of uh, the 2011 Act. But but the party against whom enforcement is being sought in Pakistan, that party would have a right to basically challenge the enforcement. And this challenge takes place under Article 5 of the New York Convention Act. So under the New York Convention regime, when the award eventually comes to Pakistan and it is sought to be enforced, uh, the party against whom the award is being enforced would have an opportunity of challenging that award and the grounds for, for the challenge are laid down in the New York Convention uh, uh, Act in, in, in its Article 5. Having said this, this award, when it comes to Pakistan, it directly goes to a high court and if I fail to uh, mention, uh, the uh, a high court one of uh, a high court has exclusive jurisdiction under this law to deal with all matters related to New York Convention Act, uh, New York Convention of 1958. 
In this particular case too, when the award is brought to Pakistan for enforcement, it would go to the High Court, but the High Court would simply register the award. The party against whom the award is being enforced would not have an opportunity to challenge the award like the way uh, you mentioned grants that uh, right to, uh, to, 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 to the party against whom the award is being uh, is being arranged. So roughly speaking, roughly speaking, this is the regime. Shuru me mene baat ki thi ke international arbitration kyu zaruri hai? Jab when you go to some other country and when you wish to make investments and the value of uh, these investments runs into billions of dollars as uh, the gentleman rightly pointed out you simply don't trust the legal system of a country with whom you may be in dispute you want your dispute resolution to take place in a neutral territory in a neutral jurisdiction and unless and until you have peace of mind that not only that your uh, dispute resolution is taking place in a neutral jurisdiction but that the award eventually would be enforced in the country where the, the, the dispute arose you would simply not invest in that country so these days there are indices and these indices basically uh, talk about uh, the risk appetite of uh, investors so when the uh, when the when the analysts are working on these indices they look at all these provisions and if the country has not set uh, ratified the new york convention or the new york convention is not uh, applicable to that country or if the country has not ratified the washington convention then basically the country would get a poor rating say C or D. So when the investor would, if at all, decide to invest in their country, the investor would be looking for much, much higher returns because the investor knows that the investor has a very high exposure for the reason that if something goes wrong, his or her case would be uh, would come before uh, the, the national court and generally in uh, international commercial transactions generally it's accepted that a national court could not be very neutral so if you want to make a country investor friendly or if you want uh, foreign if you want to attract foreign investors to your country i mean these are certain things which you have to do and if you don't do these things then your country would not be considered an investor friendly country so this is the reason why when Pakistan ratified the New York Convention on 14th or 15th of uh, July 2005, it was pursuant to some conditionality. It was an IMF conditionality or perhaps a World Bank loan or whatever. So the day Pakistan ratified the New York Convention, the very next day or the, the, the same day, Pakistan promulgated one of the ordinances. Now, this is this is this is the tragedy, and the tragedy is that Pakistan conveys this impression that now we are in compliance with, it, with, with our international obligations. But when you do a deeper analysis, you notice that the, the, required, regime, uh, the required, uh, regime is purportedly is purportedly in place, but the spirit is missing. I'll give you one example. Pakistan has a population of uh, 200 million, 20 crore ka mulk hai. Aur mera khayal hai ki Pakistan dunia ka panchma ya chhada bada mulk hai by size of population. Pakistan opted for this regime back in 2006, uh, 2005, and today up till 2017. Koi, koi saab, ye guess karne ki koshish karenge ki Pakistan mein 2005 se leke 2017 tak kitne international arbitral awards enforce hoye. Pakistani courts ne, 17 uh, Pakistani courts ne 
11 या 12 सालों में कितने फॉरेन आर्बिट्रल अवार्ड्स इन्फोर्स किए हैं कोई गैस जीरो नहीं मैं हम गैस नहीं एक 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 जीरो वन टेन हो गया जो और ये वो भी 2014 का कराची हाई कोर्ट का एक केस है मेरे ख्याल में फॉल गैस उसका केस है तो दिस इज हाउ अनफॉर्चुनेटली माय कंट्री डील्स विद इट्स इंटरनेशनल ऑब्लिगेशंस that you convey the impression that you are in line with whatever international requirements are but then you do not abide by those requirements uh, in letter in spirit to meri jo research hai main pichle 6 mahine ki baat nahi kar sakta agar pichle 6 mahine mein koi ek aur do award enforce hua that something else lekin main bilkul confidence ke sath keh sakta hu ki aaj se 6 mahine pehle tak पाकिस्तान में सिर्फ एक फॉरेन आर्बिट्रल अवार्ड जो है वो इन्फोर्स हुआ था मैं खुद एक केस पे काम कर रहा था लाहौर हाई कोर्ट में और हमारा जो ये केस है 2006 में इंस्टीट्यूट हुआ और 2014 तक वो केस चलता रहा और दी अवार्ड वाज नॉट वाज नॉट इन्फोर्स बल्कि उसमें जज साहब ने ये कहा किया कि जज साहब ने उसमें इशूज़ फ्रेम कर दिए उसके बाद जज साहब ने उसके हमारी एविडेंस आई हमारी जो एविडेंस थी उसमें चार जो विटनेसेज हैं दे केम फ्राम ओवरसीज We got completed our evidence in four months. दूसरों की जो evidence है वो ढाई साल तक चलती रही और ढाई साल में उनका पहला जो evidence पहले witness की जो evidence है उसकी भी ये complete नहीं हुई 2014, 2015, 2015 में आके जो foreign जो investor था उसने कहा कि we are not interested हम इसको जो है further pursue नहीं करना चाहते तो अब जो इसकी जो जो इसकी basically जो details है उसमें थोड़ा सा हम चले जाते हैं अगर आप आगे चलें तो � तो ये बेसिकली जी ये 2011 का एक्ट है एन एक्ट ऑफ प्रोवाइड फॉर रिकग्निशन एंड एनफोर्समेंट ऑफ आर्बिट्रेशन एग्रीमेंट्स आर्बिट्रेशन एग्रीमेंट्स एंड फॉर एन आर्बिट्रेशन अवार्ड इट शुड अप्लाई टू आर्बिट्रेशन एग्रीमेंट्स मेड बिफोर ऑन और आफ्टर द डेट ऑफ कमेंसमेंट ऑफ दिस एक्ट दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट जो आपके न्यूयॉर्क कन्वेंशन का जो एक्ट है ये बेसिकली किसी भी इंटरनेशनल आर्बिट्रेशन एग्रीमेंट से डील करते हैं और उसमें कोई बेसिकली कट ऑफ डेट नहीं है तो अगर आपका एक इंटरनेशनल आर्बिट्रेशन एग्रीमेंट अठारह में हुआ है या 1977 में हुआ है स्टिल दैट इंटरनेशनल आर्बिट्रेशन एग्रीमेंट वुड बी कवर्ड बाय द बाय द 2011 एक्ट लेकिन जहां तक इंटरनेशनल आर्बिट्रल अवार्ड्स का ताल्लुक है देर इज अ कट ऑफ डेट एंड द कट ऑफ डेट इज फोर्टींथ ऑफ जुलाई टू थाउजेंड फाइव एंड इट्स इट्स अबाउट एप्लाई टू फॉर मेड बिफोर द फोर्टीन डे ऑफ जुलाई टू तो बस वो पाकिस्तान ने जो उसको रेटिफाई किया था पाकिस्तान ने इसको चौदह को रेटिफाई किया था उसी दिन जो है वो पहली ऑर्डिनेंस आ गया था तो जो चीज़ हमें याद रखने की है कि जहाँ तक इंटरनेशनल आर्बिट्रेशन एग्रीमेंट्स का ताल्लुक है उसमें कोई कट ऑफ डेट नहीं है उसमें कोई टाइम नहीं है लेकिन जहाँ तक इंटरनेशनल आर्बिट्रेशन आर्बिट्रल अवार्ड्स का ताल्लुक है चौदह जुलाई दो से पहले के जो आर्बिट्रल अवार्ड्स हैं दोज वुड नॉट बी एनफोर्सिबल इन पाकिस्तान और फहर इफ यू आर लकी और आपका वो जो रिसिप्रोकेटिंग टेरिटरी वगैरह में आपका अगर होते हैं तो आप जो 1937 का प्रोटोकॉल जो 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 प्रोटोकॉल एंड कन्वेंशन एक्ट है उसके अंडर आप कर लेंगे लेकिन जो सिपेलिटी अवार्ड है उसमें आप न्यूयॉर्क कन्वेंशन वुड नॉट बी कवर कॉन्ट्रेक्टिंग स्टेट कॉन्ट्रेक्टिंग मीन्स अ स्टेट विच इज दर्टिकुलर कन्वेंशन Court means a high court, and such other civilian courts in Pakistan has been duly notified by the federal government in the official budget. Just when you talk about under the New York Convention regime, uh, everything and anything which has to do anything with the New York Convention of uh, 1958, the a high court has exclusive jurisdiction to deal with all matters related to New York Convention Act of 1958. This may throw us a little diverting, and we will talk about it later. Us ke baad aur kind of baat se. Foreign arbitral award. मेरे को नहीं बात करने आती कि what is the definition of foreign arbitral award? Foreign arbitral award means a foreign arbitral award made in a contracting state and such as other state has been notified by the federal government in the official state. तो ये जो आपका सवाल था to go back to that question जो किरण साहब ने जो सवाल किया था वो ये था कि अगर जो जो arbitration हुई है अगर basically वो दो दो पार्टीज के दरमियान में हुई है एंड 
those basically parties, they come from the same jurisdiction, but the arbitration takes place outside of, uh, say, Pakistan, would that award be considered uh, a foreign arbitral award? I don't know, but if you look at the first test, the first test is that basically, the foreign arbitral award definition, and this is a very relevant issue, and I will talk about it, but I will talk about it, and 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 I will talk about it, should be made in a contracting state. So, so long as the, 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 the award is made in a contracting state, it would be treated as a foreign arbitral award. Or, the decision of the court, the basic is just saying, when the high court has not been standing anything contained in any of the law for the timing in court, the court should exercise exclusive jurisdiction. Exclusive jurisdiction to identify and settle matters related to or arising from this act. And uh, we have a subsection 2 it. An application to say legal proceedings pursuant to the provisions of Article 2 we have to talk about the government. Now, the most issue in law practice is that you have entered into uh, a contract and in that contract there will be an arbitration clause. And that arbitration clause is generally referred to as an arbitration agreement. So you would, uh, uh, there would be, say, an international agreement uh, between two parties. One party comes from Pakistan and the other party comes from, say, uh, Germany. And the countries of both the parties are the contracting states. And there, 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 there is an arbitration agreement. So generally speaking, in an international, in an international uh, contract, there would be two relevant laws. One law would deal with the overall contract, which is generally referred to as the matrix contract. So it's possible that uh, the law which governs the main contract would be law of one country. And then there would be, or there could be, a law which, which would only and only deal with the arbitration agreement. So it could be another law. Generally speaking, uh, the same law would govern the main contract and the same law would govern the arbitration agreement. So what typically happens in the case of Pakistan is that uh, there is clearly an international arbitration agreement and whenever there is a dispute between the parties, uh, the local party would run to the civil court and the local party would start legal proceedings against the international party. And for those local legal proceedings, I mean, the, 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 the local party would, would take refuge under the Arbitration Act of 1940 and argue that uh, the, 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 the dispute is covered by the uh, Arbitration Act of 1940. What does the, the 2011 Act say? It says, Enforcement of arbitration agreements. A party to an arbitration agreement against whom legal proceedings have been brought in respect of a matter which is covered by the arbitration agreement may, upon notice to the other party to the proceedings, apply to the court in which the proceedings have been brought to start the proceedings insofar as they concern that matter. On an application under subsection 1, the court shall refer the parties to arbitration unless it finds that the arbitration agreement is null and void, inoperative, or, or, or incapable of being performed. So in our scenario, if there is an international arbitration agreement, and uh, if one of the party starts legal proceedings in a Pakistani court, what you can do is that you can file an application under section 4 informing the court that there is an international arbitration agreement between the two parties and that the local court, which generally is a civil court, should stay its proceedings and refer the parties to arbitration. This is the mechanism which is uh, provided under the New York Convention Act uh, of uh, 2011. But if the local court believes that the arbitration agreement is null and void, inoperative, or incapable of being performed. The local court, in that case, 
would first make, make, make their uh, declaration and then it would proceed with its uh, with its legal proceedings. But the mechanism, but the mechanism provided under the New York Convention Act of uh, uh, 2011 is that uh, whenever legal proceedings are uh, instituted in or before a Pakistani court in violation of the international arbitration agreement, uh, one could immediately file an application under Section 4 asking the Pakistani court to stay its uh, proceedings and refer the parties uh, to international arbitration. Uh, so, Section 34 uh, Arbitration Act ki koi applicability ya uske jo criteria hote hain step in proceedings ye wo wo yahan pe nahi koi lagu hota hai Again uh, again a very good very relevant question uh, in my view in my view uh, and I think uh, this view is uh, always uh, also upheld by the Karachi High Court uh, the New York Convention Act does not envisage uh, the applicability of the Arbitration Act of uh, 1940. Uh, if you look at uh, the legislation which was introduced in Pakistan under the Exit Act, that legislation clearly states that uh, any proceedings uh, which take place under the Exit Convention in Pakistan, the Arbitration Act of, uh, 2000, uh, of, uh, of 1940 would have no applicability. Unfortunately, the New York Convention Act of 2011 does not specifically make this statement. And uh, it's very unfortunate that uh, the whole regime under the New York Convention, uh, as far as the province of uh, Punjab is concerned, is, uh, is uh, currently inoperative on account of uh, an unfortunate judgment uh, which was handed down by the Lahore High Court in 2011 in the famous uh, Tisai case. Uh, Tisai case uh, involved uh, or related to or dealt with a dispute between a Pakistani and a Japanese company. Uh, the, the governing law of uh, the arbitration agreement was Pakistani law uh, arbitration took place in Singapore and uh, when the award was uh, brought to Pakistan for enforcement, the party against whom, the, party, uh, the local party against whom the award was uh, given went to the civil court and basically started raising objections under 1940 Act. And in the meantime, Tisai Corporation went before the Sindh High Court and basically filed an application uh, for the enforcement of uh, foreign arbitral award under the New York Convention. Uh, the case which, which was filed before the before one of the civil courts in Lahore eventually came before the Lahore High Court and uh, in a very unfortunate judgment, in my view, uh, the Lahore High Court held that uh, the award which uh, was handed down or the, which was made, the award which was made in Singapore, it would not be treated as a foreign arbitral award because the governing law of uh, the arbitration agreement was Pakistani law. And the Lahore High Court relied upon a very famous uh, case of the Pakistani Supreme Court uh, which is the Hitachi case uh, or Rupali case. But the Lahore High Court did not appreciate that uh, the Hitachi case dealt with the Arbitration and Protocol Act. And the Arbitration and Protocol Act, Section 9, stated that if the governing law of an arbitration agreement is Pakistani law, even though the award is made outside of Pakistan, it would still be treated as a domestic award, meaning, uh, meaning thereby that the Protocol and Convention Act of 1937 would not apply. So there was this Section 9 of the Protocol and Convention Act, and when the Supreme Court of Pakistan held that an award, or, 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 or uh, an award which is made outside of Pakistan, on an arbitration agreement 
where the governing law of the arbitration agreement is Pakistani law, the basis for that decision of the Supreme Court for Section 9 of the Protocol and Convention Act. So when the Section 9 of the Protocol and Convention Act was repealed, basically that, that legal basis also went away. So, so, so unfortunately the Lahore High Court in the famous Tisari Corporation case relied upon a judgment of the Supreme Court which in my view was not a good law. And then uh, the Lahore High Court went on and the Lahore High Court also held that uh, in those areas uh, or in relation to those areas which are not covered by the uh, 2011 Arbitration Act, in relation to those areas, the 1940 Act could be utilized. With the result, the speakers who were the 2040 Act were the ones who were the ones who were the ones who were the ones who international arbitration ki jo proceedings hain usme aake wo ab apply karne lagi hain jo ek further ek unfortunate development hai wo ye hai ke jo tisai jo corporation ka jo case hai wo 2012 se leke 2017 tak supreme court ke samne padha hua hai aur kal meri ek wakil sahab se jo ke us case mein ek counsel diye hain kal Arbitration, किसी भी मुल्क की जो जो economic development है, किसी मुल्क का जो business environment है, ये उसमें सबसे fundamental एक element है. और मेरे अपने नजदीक जो Supreme Court of Pakistan, उसको Tisai Corporation का case, in accordance with whatever the Honorable Supreme Court feels appropriate, उसको decide कर देना चाहिए था, ताकि जो ambiguity इस issue पर Pakistan में revolve कर रही है, at least that ambiguity should have been revo uh, removed. And I will just give you one example. The rest of the countries that are in the foreign investment law are very important. In April 2016, I had an arbitration conference in China. And the people who are in the topic are Interest under Islamic and Pakistani law is illegal. Agar award ki under interest ka jo component hai, is that enforceable in Pakistan? I am sorry, 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 I am Number two, you have this concept of uh, arbitrability. 
मतलब और भी ट्रिपल पी कर एक ऑब्जेक्ट है जो कि कई ऐसे मेथड्स हैं विच कैन नॉट बी विच कैन नॉट बी रिजॉल्व थ्रू आर्बिट्रेशन फॉर इंस्टेंस जो इंटरनेशनल कोर्स की जो जो इंटरनेशनल आर्बिट्रेशन की जो प्रैक्टिस हैं जो एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव डिस्प्यूट्स होते हैं या जो बेसिकली मेरिज से रिलेटेड जो डिस्प्यूट फैमिली मैटर्स जो होती हैं जो टैक्स की जो मैटर्स होते हैं और भी इंतहा जो चीज़ें हैं ये वो चीज़ें हैं जो कि जो क्रिमिनल मैटर्स होते हैं जो इंटरनेशनल जो एक जिसपोजेंस है इट होल्ड्स के ये जो मैटर्स हैं दे आर नॉट आर्बिट्रेबल एंड सिंस दीज मैटर्स आर नॉट आर्बिट्रेबल इफ देर इज एन अवॉर्ड ऑन अ मैटर विच इज नॉट आर्बिट्रेबल अंडर द लॉज ऑफ पाकिस्तान सच एन अवॉर्ड वुड नॉट बी इम्पॉसिबल इन पाकिस्तान मजीद कोई सवाल नहीं तो फिर मैं ख्याल में मैं अपनी जो प्रेजेंटेशन है उसे एंड करता हूँ थैंक यू